This is Michael Andretti's Indie Car Challenge for the Super Nintendo. The first Super Nintendo re review on this channel. And for the first Super Nintendo review, I wanted to talk about a game uh, that absolutely nobody talks about. Everybody talks about Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island, Link to the Past, all those great games. And for good reason. But I wanted to talk about a game that really should be talked about more. Michael this game... Andretti. It has a couple of videos online, some people talk about it here and there, but it just doesn't really get the spotlight that I think that it deserves because this is classic arcade style racing done right. Released in September of 1994 in the United States and 1995 in Japan, uh, this game is based on the 1994 IndyCar World Championship. Uh, which is really the golden age of IndyCar racing. Uh, NASCAR fans may think that NASCAR has always been really big in the United States, but before Jeff Gordon came to prominence, uh, IndyCar ruled the roost as far as uh, U.S. motorsports goes. Uh, the Indy 500 wasn't just the big draw of IndyCar. Uh, IndyCar itself was just a huge draw uh, thanks to its partnerships with uh, ABC and ESPN back in the 90s. Uh, you got to see such greats like Mario Andretti, AJ Foyt, Alan Sir Jr., Michael Andretti, the namesake of this game, Bobby Rahal, all fantastic, well-known names in the motorsports world throughout the entire world internationally known names uh in indycar uh and you just had such beautiful tracks like surface paradise elkhart lake michigan phoenix uh just fantastic racing overall And driver-sponsored games are kind of a mixed bag. They either really suck or they're really good. There's really no in-between. And thankfully, this game is uh, towards the really good end of the spectrum. Uh, this game uh, has a championship mode, which is the main mode, uh, which consists of 16 races, all 16 races of the 1994 schedule. Uh, so, again, you get those really classic tracks like Surface Paradise, Long Beach, uh, Michigan, like I said, uh, just really cool tracks. Now, they're not necessarily accurate to real life. Uh, this game isn't trying to be accurate to real life in pretty much any way, shape, or form. Uh, this is a very no-nonsense, get-to-the-point, not trying to be more than what it is type of game. And you just don't really see games like that nowadays. So it's really refreshing to see a game just be so upfront with itself and just have fun with what it is instead of trying to be what it isn't. Good. So before each race, uh, Michael Andretti himself will give you some advice Michael, on advice. the upcoming race at hand. Uh, he'll tell you about uh, the type of settings that you should put onto your car, your setup, uh, how you should uh, expect the track to handle and how to attack the corners and stuff like that. Really good advice. And something unique to this game for its time is just the, the amount of stuff that you can change on the car. Now, it's only three things. You can change tire pressure, gear ratio, and downforce. And there's only three levels for each setting. But that's still really cool to see in an arcade-style uh, race game. And they do make a difference overall. Um, but you also can just use the default settings that are for every track. Or you can make your own custom setups. And... Uh, usually custom setups are the way to go if you want to get uh, to the very top of the uh, standings. Uh, but you can use the defaults and just use that throughout the whole race. doesn't matter. Uh, and it's just really cool uh, to see a game this old have those kinds of options because they, they weren't really common back in those days. Now there is a practice mode in this game, uh, but you can't uh, swap out of uh, championship and practice mode uh, independently. You have to be in one or the other. Uh, so basically the only practice that you get at these tracks is the uh, qualifying where you get two laps per track 
uh, to go as fast as you can and get as uh, far up the grid as possible uh, to improve your starting position uh, for the actual race. And that's pretty cool to see. Uh, and the only issue that I have with that is that Indianapolis only has two laps for qualifying instead of the usual traditional four laps, which I feel like is kind of an oversight. I would have expected them to, you know, give a little bit of exception because Indianapolis is like the biggest part of IndyCar. You would think that they would try to make it at least a little bit more realistic in that sense, but it's a minor gripe. It's just a nitpick. No, no worries. And right away you notice uh, the Mode 7 hard at work works great as always. Uh, it's pretty much the bread and butter of Super Nintendo driving games. Uh, and it just looks fantastic in this game on a nice big CRT TV. It just looks incredible uh, like you would expect from the Super Nintendo. Just great graphics, uh, great sound design. Uh, you also have like some voice clips from uh, an announcer girl and Michael Andretti himself. He even does some voice acting in this game, uh, which is really funny because when you when you run AI off the uh, road, sometimes he'll uh, say, good move. And I, I don't really think that it's intended to be that way, but it's really funny when it happens. Now the downside to Mode 7 is that uh, you don't have 3D uh, track walls and so sometimes they can be pretty hard to see and when you hit them you slow down dramatically. There's a lot of ways to slow down in this game. Hitting walls, uh, running into grass, hitting other cars of course uh, and you know that's to be expected and that makes the uh, game more challenging of course. Uh, but yeah it, it's something that, that happens quite often. Uh, yeah, especially getting hit by AI, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but the driving overall feels pretty good. It's about what you expect from a game of this uh, of this time period. Uh, the controls are pretty smooth uh, for just basically being button pressing and stuff. It's pretty smooth. The uh, handling is is nice. And as somebody who's an avid sim racer, I think that's pretty high praise because I'm used to very precise steering, precise braking, and easy throttle input and stuff like that and you just don't get that in this game and it's not trying to because it's not supposed to be a simulation game and when you get into the mindset that it's just supposed to be fun arcade uh racing fun i mean it's exactly that uh it's just pure fun uh the only issue with this game really is the ai and i i gotta give it some leeway for this because uh it just of its time uh AI for uh, for uh, racing opponents just wasn't all that great. Uh, it's not exactly complex, uh, but the problem is is that the uh, AI cars, being that they're so wide, they take up a lot of real estate on track. So actually passing cars can be a real chore, and combine that with the uh, pretty awful collision detection in this game. Uh, it can make the racing kind of aggravating at times, uh, but the collision detection being horrible is kind of to be expected because uh, these cars aren't 3D objects. They're not able to really tell like exact exact positionings and coordinates and stuff like that. Uh, that sort of horsepower just didn't exist on the Super Nintendo. Oh, yeah. So you'll have some weird collision moments here and there, but uh, it, it's just... It's just the nature of the beast, and if you were somebody playing this in 1994 and didn't you know, know any better of what games would become, I think that it wouldn't. I think it would just be part of the experience for you. If there is one thing that I think would have really improved the game, I think a rudimentary draft. Uh, feature would have been really nice to have uh, just so that when you're on straightaways it doesn't feel like that uh, that you don't have any control over your own like speed and like uh, how you can pass other cars I think that would make it uh, a little bit more bearable uh, because following behind cars on straightaways is a chore like I said the, the cars take up a lot of real estate uh, real estate on the track uh, so trying to pass them is pretty difficult so i think i think even just like a very simple 
uh, drafting mechanic uh, would have fixed a lot of those issues I have with it. But honestly, it's not a huge issue. It's aggravating, but that's just how arcade driving games are. And uh, I, for what it is, they do a really good job at it. And then in some races you actually make pit stops which i think for the time was pretty advanced i don't think that there were many games at least on home consoles that had you do pit stops like that so it's a very interesting mechanic uh the races aren't that long but some of them go longer than others so uh sometimes you'll have to make a pit stop and it's it's nothing crazy you can't like change how much fuel goes in and your tire pressures mid-race and all that it's it's nothing like that it's just you gun it down pit road, you get your service, and you go out. And it's really fun in that regard. Uh, it doesn't try to be any more uh, than, it, than it is, which, again, is what I really like about this game in general. Uh, the only problem is that uh, pit road entry is really narrow, and that's why I didn't win at Indy in this footage, because I crashed into the pit wall trying to make a pit stop. And if you know anything about IndyCar, you'll most certainly know about the Andretti Curse, and it seems like even in this game, the Andretti Curse is modeled because I can't win in Indy. I don't know why, I just have really shit luck at Indy, and I just can't win there. Maybe it's just because I'm driving Michael Andretti's car, I don't know, but I can't win in Indy. It was actually a really violent crash, all things considered. Let's take a let's take an instant replay of that. And uh, while we're talking about replays, the replay system is insane to me. Like this is 1994. Race replays in video games were just not heard of. Like it just did not happen. Uh, maybe on like an obscure PC game from like the late 80s or in the arcades or something like that they had it back then but like not not on home consoles that just never happened so the fact that this game not only has a replay system but has multiple different uh, camera angles is mind-blowing to me again 1994 this is in I cannot believe that uh, I mean, it's nothing, like, spectacular. It's not gonna blow your mind, like, visually or anything like that. In fact, it's kinda not great in that aspect, but the fact that it's even there in the first place is just boggling to me. So yeah, Michael Andretti's IndyCar Challenge is a really fun game to play and a really interesting game to look back on. Uh, and the game is really cheap as well. Like you can find this game pretty easily and it only goes for like two, maybe three dollars at most. Uh, this game is practically worthless. And honestly, if you are a racing fan like I am, uh, even if you're not really into IndyCar, if you're into like F1 or something like that, this is still great game to get for your Super Nintendo. Uh, and with the price, I mean, you really can't beat that. It's pretty much a free game at that point. Uh, but you'll have fun with it. Uh, this game is, uh, maybe two hours, two and a half hours to complete, uh, a championship. And, uh, you'll have, you'll have fun with it. It is kind of aggravating. Uh, the AI can be kind of annoying at times, but, uh, you know, it, that's just the, that's just par for the course with, uh, these arcade style racing games, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't really have any complaints, nothing too crazy. Uh, I think that it's a very well-rounded game for its time, and I even think this game is pretty underrated. Like like I said at the beginning, I don't see anybody talking about this game. Not even, like, IndyCar fans from, like, of the time. Like, I don't, I don't really know how many people actually know about this game. I'm sure there are plenty, because there's plenty of cartridges out there for it, but, like... It seems like nobody's like this is probably the most detailed video of this game that has ever been released on youtube as far as i can tell like it just seems like nobody talks about it so uh, i just wanted to show off this game because i think i think this is a racing game that is worth looking into congratulations 